I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. I got my bachelor's degree in anthropology at Sac State, and I got a master's degree in marriage and family therapy and school counseling, so two separate ones at Alliant International University. I also formed a nonprofit while I was almost finished with grad school called Couples Resource Collective. I started my own private practice. We work with couples, we work with individuals, and just about any kind of issue that you can imagine and every kind of population, LGBT, and we do make diagnoses as well. First thing I do in the morning is just come on in the office and check my emails, and then I'll go over my notes from last week. I have a general idea about where it is that we left off and what we're talking about, but stuff happens by the hour, by the week. So while I can expect to some degree, it's all pretty up in the air until we start talking about it. Typically on my days, I'm, I'm seeing about six to seven clients. Today, I've got uh, clinical supervision that I'm providing for the non-licensed staff. We're also doing some like mock sessions so they get a little bit of training on working with clients under specific circumstances. Do we have any of the crises or emergencies we need to discuss? So I did that D&D couple this week. I had them build their own characters and then they built their partner's character. Having the conversations through those characters will be useful, but the, the, the stuff around the house, yeah, they could, you could have more surface level conversation. Right, yeah. It was so fun to just see them just geek out and be so happy and excited in session. And That's awesome. <laughs> Great job. Hey, I got a trivia question for you. What's the difference between a marriage and family therapist and a psychologist? A lot of people get that mixed up. Well, the answer for you at the end of the video. So one of the questions that a lot of people will have to start off if you want to, if you're interested in this field is like, how can I see how therapy is done? And unfortunately, the answer to that generally is you can't. But one of the things that we do to try to emulate that is to do like mock role plays. And you'll do this in your graduate schools and things like that so that you have some kind of experience. Over the phone when we were talking, you had mentioned that communication was kind of a central issue that you guys were struggling with. She's just spent more and more time at work and I've tried to tell her that I feel lonely, that like I'm missing affection and it just turns into a fight every time. I try to communicate the best that I can, but it's like I try and I try and nothing is enough for her. One of the things that I'd like you guys to consider to try to take home as we like to plan out stuff throughout the week um, is a tactic I like to call like walk away and take more time. Basically like it's okay to ask for more time, but whoever asks for it, put a time on it and be the person to come and initiate that conversation. Are we good? We That's can, great. We can try that. Yeah. The priority that you were going to do was to be able to talk to your partner about your feelings and the emotional needs that you have. How did that go this week? I was able to catch myself and identify what I was feeling. And I just don't know if I feel safe. I think it's more so what I'm worried about. Like, is he going to blow up on me? You know, there'll be certain times when I'm putting my arm around her and she'll just like move it to just like holding hands like we're in middle school or something. It was really weird. Does he not trust me with the amount of physical intimacy that I give him? Well, is that true, Clay? I mean, yeah, how do you feel about what she's saying right now? So what you just saw in those mock sessions was what you could hypothetically expect if you're not a therapist and, you know, you wanted to sit in and see what it would look like doing therapy. Some of the more common issues that we'll end up addressing and treating in here are going to be things like depression and anxiety, communication, relational issues, LGBT issues, and personal growth. I think some of the skills and personality traits that are really important to have in this field are patience and pacing. You also want to be somebody who's comfortable in uncomfortable situations. You want to be able to be good at talking and be approachable when you're having conversations as well. So the stuff that you're going to be talking with people about is going to resonate and affect you a lot. And so it takes a lot of skill to be able to compartmentalize that yourself and make sure that you're giving yourself enough attention and love so that you can give the people that you're working with that same attention and love. I'm a marriage and family therapist who owns his own practice and I get to plan my schedule. But you can also be at a group practice. There are opportunities at like state, county, and federal positions. It can translate into several other different career fields based on the strengths that we develop in like conflict resolution in our field. If you're interested in this career, you gotta get a four-year degree first. It can be in a lot of different subjects, but from there you'll have to get into a graduate program in marriage and family therapy which is a two-year program usually. You can do a doctorate with it if you, if you wanted. Beyond that, after you graduate, you become an associate and register with the state. 
And after you've done 3000 hours of direct client work, as well as like some indirect work, you're able to apply for licensure if you've passed the test. That's a comprehensive clinical exam. And I think this field is really about fortitude, you know, the ability to kind of get through a lot of things that are difficult, but it's super rewarding when you do. To be able to actually help people, genuinely help them day in and day out, Thanks for watching. Be sure to give us a like and subscribe to our channel. We'll see you next time. How often do you meet somebody in the gardening section of like Barnes and Noble? Somebody in the gardening section of Barnes and Noble. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm putting that one in my pocket. I'm, I'm using that.